Commonwealth Bank here on the Voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And it's time now for our interview with John Moses of the Altoona Curve. Our interviews are powered by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. John, good morning. Good morning. All right. And John, I have Jake Slobodnik here in the studio with me. We're going to try to double team you on this today. So I apologize about that if that's a surprise for you. <laughs> no problem. All right. So uh, let's talk about last night. Big game for the curve. The curve has been showing off the lumber recently, it sounds like. You know, Mason Martin has uh, turned into one of the more impressive power hitters in all of minor league baseball this year. I think we all had an idea of what it could be when he hit 35 home runs in 2019 down in Greensboro and Bradenton, but this year it's sort of gone to another level. His 17th home run of the season last night, leading the league. He leads all Pirates minor leaguers in home runs and RBI, and you know, power's been a big part of the conversation for the curve this year. It's been fun to watch. Yeah, and that's something, John, this is Jake, that's something that the Pirates have uh, really struggled with in the past years is really developing some power, but it seems like through the minor leagues, you mentioned with Mason and then a few other guys on the curve and throughout the entire farm system, power is really starting to develop, and it's going to be really interesting to see how they develop coming up. But Mason Martin, I want to talk about a swing a little bit. It looks like he's swinging a little top-heavy, you know, something that you don't normally see from power hitters. Normally they try to keep it as straightforward as possible. It's just amazing watching his swing because with such an unorthodox swing, he's allow, he's able to generate so much power behind it and really send the ball towering into the skyliner. Yeah, it really is impressive with Mason. Um, you know, he's he's got a maturity to his game this year um, where he is starting to grow into some more power to the opposite field. You know, normally all of his home runs, I've been told, have gone to center field and right field. Um, but he's hit a couple to the opposite field, not only on the road in some of the smaller ballparks, but, you know, he hit one to left center uh, last week that was pretty impressive. So, I think it's just a, a show of the maturity of his power that has come through. And, um, you know, there's a couple guys like that that are starting to build in some more power. And, you know, I think you sort of have to tip your cap to Pirates General Manager Ben Sherrington. He's uh, built this farm system in the last year and a half. And, you know, based on who they got in the draft uh, over the last couple of days, uh, there's some people thinking that, you know, the Pirates now have a, a pretty interesting and filled farm system that has a lot of high upside talent you're not the only one who's thinking that this draft class is incredible (laughs) i mean we've seen the critics putting this in the top five or some of them are saying the number one draft class of the year so how eager are is the curve and the curve um, crew the coaches ready to see these youngsters come up through the system and see them in action soon yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it's more talent in the cupboard. Um, you know, obviously we've been, we've been lucky to watch guys like O'Neill Cruz and Rodolfo Castro and Mason Martin and Cal Mitchell this year. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously more on the way now. We had an idea early this year that, you know, Greensboro would ha- have a lot of talent as well, but, you know, now it's only a matter of time until, you know, somebody like Henry Davis gets on the radar to, uh, to play for Altoona. Probably not this season is my guess, but, you know, you never say never. You know, he's obviously a highly advanced player being drafted number one overall out of Louisville. Um, but, you know, there's there's going to be several guys that get onto the radar for Altoona probably, you know, at the beginning of next season and certainly toward the second half of next year. John, one of the players I want to talk about and get your thoughts on is Josh Bissonette. He's really filled a nice gap at uh, at Altoona. For, he's filled in for injuries, and he's just looked uh, really good in filling in for these spots. His batting average may not reflect that, but just watching highlight, uh, he's come through in the clutch, and he's also a very solid defender. What are your thoughts on how Josh Bissonette has really grown into a, a utility player role this season? Yeah, just a guy who's taking advantage of the opportunity. Um, you know, certainly when the opening day roster features Juan Bay, Rodolfo Castro, and O'Neill Cruz, um, you know, there aren't many other available at bats. Um, you know, and now between the injuries and a couple promotions, um, you know, Josh has stepped up into a big spot. And, you know, he's one of the more popular guys on the team. You know, he's, he's a great teammate and, you know, just a terrific individual, but, you know, a guy who isn't shy about waiting for his turn. Um, you know, last night came up with a couple of big hits for Altoona. You know, I think it was pretty impressive the way that, you know, once the curve got a run in the first inning, three more in the second, you know, they just sort of kept adding to that lead and they kept the foot on the gas pedal, which I think is something that 
manager Miguel Perez has always been looking for, for a consistent offensive attack. And you know, Josh was a big part of it last night. And now that he's getting regular bats, look forward to seeing him be a part of it more going forward. The pitching staff has also shown a lot of mm-hmm. metal this season, I think. And last night, I mean, it's become not just the starters, but the the whole battery as well of uh, of pitching staff has been amazing so far for the curve this season. They've really kept them in games where it seems like they're going to get in trouble, but the pitching staff's able to get them out, bail them out pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, Altoona has been fortunate to have you know pretty much the same bullpen group just about the whole season. It's a good group to start the year. You know, some of these guys are unsung heroes, guys like Shea Murray and John O'Reilly and Cam Aldred, um, you know, have, have really stemmed the tide and, you know, kept the curve in games this year. Um, you know, we've talked about Hunter Stratton in the past. He's, uh, he's had a really impressive year where he's, you know, seemingly striking out just about everybody in sight. Almost 60% of the outs he's recorded this year have been strikeouts. He's got 41 on the year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, adding Christopher Melendez right at the beginning of June has given – the team, you know, it's just another guy that throws really hard. You know, there's some some elite velocity existing in the back end of that bullpen. And, you know, guys have just been consistent this year. And, you know, that's the one thing you sort of cross your fingers and hope to get from pitchers is a, uh, a consistency that you can rely upon them to keep you in games. Yeah, and one of the things, you mentioned Hunter Stratton, his efficiency coming out of the bullpen. What's your ETA on him moving up to either AAA or maybe even the big leagues here soon? Because he's putting up some prolific numbers this season. You know, it, it, Hunter can't be that far away from a, a promotion at this point. Um, you know, he struggled with his ability to command the baseball in 2019. You know, he was walking more guys than he probably should have. Um, but he's a guy who put in a lot of work um, when the 2020 season was canceled as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, shortened up his arm stroke a little bit. Um, and, you know, they spoke to him about, you know, getting his body right and, you know, cleaning up the, uh, the the ball four, and Hunter has shown that that work has paid off for him. Um, you know, he's got an ERA right around 1.5 right now. Um, just about every time he takes the ball, it you, you feel a confidence that you're going to get three outs pretty quickly. Um, so in my mind, he can't be that far away from a promotion. Um, he's, he's been outstanding this year. The relievers have been amazing, as we said. Cam, Will, and Shea last night. Cam Aldred, Will Gardner, Shea Murray. Four shutout innings of relief. Mm -hmm. And we're getting a lot of those shutout innings. So is there any chance that we could see them promoted either as relievers or maybe promoted on the staff itself to become starters? Yeah. um, You know, I think some of those guys are are settled in as relievers these days. Um, And, you know, they've sort of found a, a nice niche and rhythm back there. So... Um, you know, I think just given the consistency that that, they, that Altoona's gotten from a couple of spots, um, you know, indicates to me that, uh, you know, at some point they're, um, you know, going to have to be challenged by more experienced hitters at AAA. Um, and I think it's only a matter of time uh, for some of those guys to go up, you know, once, uh, once the Pirates work our, work our way into the second half of the season here. Now, one of the other pitchers I want to talk about is one of the guys we just got in the Kevin Kramer trade, and that's Nathan Kirby. It's part of a two-parter. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on him coming to the, uh, you know, just in his short time spent with the curve so far, and uh, how is he adjusting to the system here in, in, in the Pittsburgh farm system? Yeah, you know, Nathan's a great story. Um, you know, he was a highly thought-of pitcher coming out of college. He uh, recorded the final out on the mound in the 2015 College World Series at the University of Virginia. Um, and he's battled a lot of injury. He had Tommy John surgery, uh, which kept him out in the 2016 season. Uh, it developed a nerve issue during his rehab that required another surgery and forced him to miss the entire 2017 season. Um, and then in 2019, um, missed the year because he had thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, and then as he was preparing for 2020, he had two broken ribs that had to get healed up um, before he could uh, start to rebuild his arm strength again. So, you know, the pandemic itself was, was almost a little bit of a blessing in disguise for Nathan because it gave him a chance <laughs> just to sort of center himself mm-hmm. um, and rebuild his arm strength. And, you know, while he's had just the one appearance with Altoona, you know, his, his numbers at AA Biloxi where he's pitching with the Brewers, Double A club um, show that he's got some pretty high upside stuff. It's it's a pretty good slider, 
um, you know, that will induce a lot of swings and misses. And, you know, if he can start to throw some strikes consistently, you know, I think the Pirates could see him as a guy that moves quickly to AAA and perhaps gets on the big league radar at the end of the year. Yeah, that would be nice to see, and that has been a rough road for uh, Mr. Kirby there. Speaking of injuries uh, with his long line of deals, the Pirates or the Curve are dealing with some injuries right now to the team. Rowan C. Contreras, O'Neill Cruz, two of the main uh, engines as this Curve team. Have you heard anything through the grapevine of how they're dealing with their injury progress? Are they rehabbing well? Any setbacks or anything? Well, you know, we've seen O'Neill still with the team, um, you know, following the medical advice that was announced by the Pirates Director of Sports Medicine back on July 7th that, you know, both guys are not going to throw for about a two- to four-week period here um, as they recover from four-hour muscle strains. Um, so, you know, haven't heard anything negative about the rehab experience. You know, I think they're sort of in the beginning stages of working through, um, you know, that inflammation to get out of there. Um, so, you know, I think we're sort of crossing our fingers that maybe we can see O'Neill and Rolanzi get back on the field at some point in early August. Okay. All right, and of course, the team's continuing their series tonight against the Rubble and Ponies. So far in this series, 2-0, and and uh, Trey McGill starting tonight for the curve. Yeah, Trey seems to get better every time he takes the ball. Um, you know, he had the one, his first start at home, he didn't throw a lot of strikes, but since then, he's been a strike-throwing machine. Set a career high with nine strikeouts in his last start at Hartford two weeks ago. Um, you know, he's just been solid every time he takes the ball for Altoona, and you know, I feel like he's starting to grow into more confidence and look forward to seeing him take the ball tonight. Same, uh, same here, same here. <laughs> All right, John, thank you very much for joining Jake and I this morning here on Indiana in the Morning. I hope it's another great day down there in Curve, PA. Thanks, John. Look forward to it. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. To it. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. To it.